Well, aloha everyone and welcome to Hawaii, the state of clean energy. You may notice I'm wearing my shades today because it's so sunny out there and all my Canadian classmates, once again, eat your hearts out. You could be here too. So um, this uh, show is sponsored by the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, who uh, has been in existence for almost 18 years. And what the Policy Forum does, it looks for good and for bad policy. We support good policy in the energy field, and we oppose bad policy, or at least comment on bad policy. I don't want to use the word oppose. I'm sorry. Uh, and try to get the best possible uh, energy policies for the state of Hawaii. And uh, the Policy Forum is funded by my uh, company or my uh, organization, the Hawaii en uh, Natural Energy Institute, who provides the funding for these shows. So today we're going to talk about the electrification of transportation. And we're delighted to have uh, two of the key people from Hawaiian Electric here today to talk about it. First of all, Michael Cologne. Michael, welcome to the show. Hello. Thank so you we're, for now on, we're both on the screen. And I'm going to get this right. Pam. And Nicole Tam uh, Ma Choat. Very good. I came close. Very good. Very, no, good. very good. Very good. And she's a senior uh, program manager in the electrification of transportation department, I'll call it. So uh, let me start off with you, Michael. Uh, could you just give us an overview of the overall electrification of transportation program so that people actually know what it is and where can they find it if they wanted to you know, read it or sure. get sure. smart on it? So, uh, as you know, electric vehicles uh, have grown here in Hawaii tremendously over the last uh, about seven or eight years. And uh, Hawaiian Electric has um, viewed that as an opportunity to um, continue in growth, a uh, new growth opportunity to support uh, this new load that's coming on. So, right. as of a couple years ago, um, Hawaiian Electric uh, created a new department uh, called Electrification of Transportation. The uh, company had been previously providing um, charging solutions, but has formalized that. Um, so what do you mean by charging solutions? I'm gonna, I'll, I'll sure. interrupt you from time sure, to time, sure. just so that the general yeah. public understand you know, what yep. you're saying. Uh, so we've provided uh, time and use rates uh, for residential um, home charging for right. your vehicles, as well as a pilot for um, public charging at our uh, fast charging stations, which we have right now. Uh, about 18 across the service territory, including Oahu, Maui County, and the Big Island. So you do all the island, all the uh, correct, correct eco uh, company eco islands, companies. Yeah. Yes. So uh, when you say fast charging, what does that actually mean? So fast charging is uh, kind of a loose term for. Um, there's generally speaking, there's about three levels of charging. There's level one, which is your home plug. Right. Then there's level two, uh, which is about double the speed of that. Um, and then level three is, uh, or fast charging, is usually a utility uh, or high capacity charging. Ours are 50 kilowatt hour charging, um, which is pretty fast. You can mm -hmm. get, for the old Nissan Leafs, the original Nissan Leafs, you could get uh, about uh, full charge with about 30 minutes charging. So it's pretty fast. Okay. So they to, take, what, about 25 kilowatt hours to charge them up? Um, yeah, it, it, it's fast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it depends it, it, on, depending the on the battery, battery. capacity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Where they're at. Okay. Yeah. Um, so in addition to those uh, two programs, uh, the company created a new department, and from that department, um, we, we developed a strategic roadmap. And the strategic roadmap kind of identified our long-term vision for electrification um, and uh, designated some um, priorities, 10 initiatives, what we call them, uh, that we will seek to uh, implement over time. Right. Um, I won't go over all of them, but you know, public education and outreach is very important. Sure. Um, teaching people about the benefits of electric transportation in terms of Saving on overall fuel costs, reduced maintenance, um, as well as um, developing opportunities for public charging for fleets, um, for um, bus type fleets, or just other kind of heavy duty when the technology becomes available, as well as um, developing solutions for workplaces and for multiple unit dwellings like condos and apartments right. where. Uh, charging infrastructure is a little bit more difficult to get in um, sure. because of just density and existing aging buildings and panel capacity. So helping um, address some of those concerns or provide solutions as we move forward. So those are all goals that we want to um, undertake okay. as we move forward. 
So, uh, Pam, where, where can we find the electrification of transportation strategy? Uh, it's on our web website. Right. So you can go to hego.com slash uh, go EV. Okay. And then uh, our strategy roadmap. So do you have to run the strategy by the PUC? Do they have an input into that? Or is it still too formative yet for the PUC to have to you know, be concerned about? That? So uh, for certain, most programs, they, they would have a comments on, but right. throughout uh, all the programs that we do or starting to initiate, uh, we include stakeholders, um, you know, both internal within Hawaiian Electric and external, right. like partners that we work with. So we get, basically garner their feedback before and after uh, we do analysis, any analysis or program design yeah. so that we take into account all their concerns and you know, we, make, we want to make sure that we address everyone's concerns before we roll out our program. So when you talk about concerns, are, are there any like a top two or three concerns that people have that, that you've identified so far? And if so, I mean, how can we, you know, we, the Royal We, how can we address those? Um, I, I guess, well, with the concerns, like one, which is quite obvious that I could think of is range anxiety. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, like people want, want to make sure that if we look at, uh, say, the charging uh, public fast charging pilot, people want to make sure that it covers where it goes, where it should go. That covers all the whole island. If we want, if you want, if people want to make a round trip around the island, they could just do it seamlessly. Right. You know, they don't have to call a tow truck or anything. Right. Uh, another thing is like usually a barriers to like um, disadvantaged, low income, low to medium mm -hmm. income community. So people want to make sure, and also we want to make sure that it's equal access to everybody. So they are low income and disadvantaged. So how do you, you know, achieve uh, equal access, like the, well, the, the social equity kind of stuff? You know, because theoretically they don't have a lot of disposable income, so True. it's still a charge to them. They still have to pay for the electricity. True. Yeah. yeah. Right. I think it's... It's a combination. You can jump in at any time. It's a combination of uh, efforts, for sure. Like you said, you know, it's um, the sticker price of the car. You mm -hmm. know, most of them don't really even buy new cars, right? Sure. But then it's, it's difficult at this time because, you know, the market is relatively new. There are not, um, so the, the used car mar market is not mature enough to, you know, have a lot of supply for right. people. And people still have fear of, uh, the battery, right? right? Like the life of it, the cause of it, if, like whether they buy the used EV and they are they going to have to pay. But then the battery cost is declining, has been declining over time. Right. So eventually we'll get to that point. But what we could do right now, and we, we are doing uh, a lot of it, is education and outreach. We have, if, if people don't know, uh, they don't care about it, they, they're not going to consider it, right? right. So we have to like, uh, Put the word out that uh, these are the benefits that you could get. Mm -hmm. uh, we could be more rely, uh, more dependent. Uh, don't have to rely on fossil fuel in the future. Right. Yeah. So, uh, Michael, um, I'm not sure if I if this is true or not, but does uh, does the company have uh, some incentive programs for actually purchasing vehicles? Uh, we we do not. Um, we have um, partnered with um, Nissan. They have a promotion that. If you bring in an electric bill, um, any Hawaiian electric bill, then you can get a discount. But it's not a funded by Hawaiian Electric. Okay. Um, we view our we can be more effective in developing rates that incentivize uh, mm -hmm. good behavior. So we kind of get dual mm -hmm. benefits of using more solar when the resource, you know, which is our lowest cost resource, use that um, incentivize that behavior yeah. uh, and and dr drive our incentive uh, creation that way. As well as you know, just um, developing and supporting infrastructure. That's a, uh, one of the things that you had asked previously was about um, a, a top consideration from stakeholders. Another one is just the need or demand, lack thereof, of charging infrastructure. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, we kind of get that one a lot. It's a steady drumbeat that you know we need more infrastructure. Right. It doesn't have to be Hawaiian Electric, mm -hmm. um, and we don't think we should be the only one providing the inf infrastructure, but uh, there is a need and it's growing. And if you have a vehicle and you rely only on public charging, yeah. it's actually pretty difficult. Yeah. Um, oh, really? Yeah, because yeah. you know, between um, 
just availability and working it into your schedule. Mm -hmm. Plus, um, you know, sometimes these machines are down. It's still a nascent technology. So sure. some, not just, you know, wine electric machines, but everybody, sometimes they don't work or whatever. And so um, being able to find uh, reliable, consistent charging is a big challenge. So what about the people that just go up to the charger, charge the car, and then just leave their car there? So like they kind of <laughs> hog it for everybody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there, are there any... Is there any way we can uh, solve that problem? Sure. Um, so we've, we've learned a lot from um, places where there's a lot more electric vehicles out on the road, uh, namely California and the West Coast states, yeah. uh, where they've had these kind of issues happening for a little bit longer than we have. Um, and in those states, so some of the charging structures for, uh, and what, by charging I mean the rate structure, is designed such that if you fill up your vehicle and you're still plugged in, then you it may switch over after a period of time to a, a rate, it's kind of a penalty rate to get you to uh, disconnect. Right. So um, there's, there, there are other ways of managing that to mitigate right. that um, charger hogging. Okay. So uh, I noticed when I go to the airport, um, especially during storm season, like there's hundreds of electric vehicles parked there. Why is that? Is that because there's some incentives for electric vehicles just to park at the airport? Yes. Having just paid $36 for two days at the airport yeah. or this weekend, it's like pretty outrageous uh, yeah. parking costs. So what's the deal for electric vehicle owners? So it's a nice benefit, and it might, may have been an unintended consequence uh, for the state, but um, right now you can get free uh, parking at metered stalls at the uh, state and county. Mm -hmm. and um, that also means other state facilities. So at the airport, there are no meters, so it's having the effect of people just parking their electric vehicle for as long as they want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a few attempts uh, by the state to rectify that particular loophole. Right. Um, and I think a fair amount of airport employees have taken advantage of that because then they can oh, get, yeah, I never uh, thought of just that. kind of yeah. park flight attendants yeah. and yeah. like that. So. Yeah, so you see a, a larger amount than you would on the road in, yeah. of EVs. And, like and there the was just a whole row yeah. of Teslas the other day, you know, like. Really? So, uh, yeah, <laughs> count on people to figure out how to game the system. Yeah. You know? It could be a car show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, yeah, too, too much. Um, so how do you pay for this electricity? I mean, have you, have you now got, do you, do you have a credit card you put in the meter or like the, the uh, charger, or how does that work? What's, yeah. what's the deal there? So there, there are three ways you could, you could pay for the charging stations, or most char charging stations. Awesome. Granted, there are some charging stations that are free. I think Volta still provide uh, free charging. Mm -hmm. There yeah. are there are a few on. It's over a beautiful. The they have a beautiful place, yeah. don't they? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Those are nice. so cool. Yeah, yes. and that was done by University of Hawaii uh, engineering students. Oh, oh I didn't. Know yeah, that. they started that out. I mean, oh. you know, they, they came up with the original concept. Like yeah, right across the uh, passageway from YM. You should go up there sometime. The kids are out there at night building their racing cars and all their projects. It's really fun to see that. You know, it gives us hope that the younger generation is mm, going to be saving technology. us in our old age. But anyway, sorry, didn't yeah. mean to go off on a tangent no, 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 here. Yeah, and there are also the usual credit card. You can just swipe your credit card, or um, yeah. there's a app. So like the charging stations has uh, different charging networks, right? Okay. So for example, we have Green Lot, a company calls uh, Green Lot and UpConnect. So you can download their application on your phone, mm -hmm. and then you know enter in all the information they need, um, and then you pay through your app. Okay. I'll have you talk about the RFID card. Yeah, so um, another method is um, through the same network provider, they will issue you a RFID card. Yeah, so if okay. you have, um, you pay on your account, and then mm -hmm. you can just tap it. Yeah. Uh, initiate your charge session. It's, and that's on our Hawaiian Electric. But a lot of them are, are that way. Mm -hmm. um, not many other public charging use credit card mm -hmm. they yeah. usually require some kind of app interaction right so what about time of use rates have we heard of is that i don't know if that's actually come out yet has it or is that something that's uh, you know getting ready to be launched and and in that case <coughs> if i have my card can i like choose when i have my car charged with my credit card so i i go for the lower rate that's a good idea um <laughs> and you know, as far as rate design, those are kind of concepts that we mm -hmm. would like to um, think about mm -hmm. to make it more customer interactive. Right. right now, what we have are, we do have a time of use rates. Um, our charging stations are actually on a time of use rate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're designed to incentivize daytime charging when their solar production right. is mm -hmm. at its highest and our cost of service is lowest. So um, 
it's the daytime is the lowest, then we have a peak period, which is where everyone goes home, the right. uh, evening Fact peak, time. and that's our highest rate. And then overnight is somewhere in between, and that's mm -hmm. so uh, that's the time of use schedule. And that general format is applied across um, for our residential rates as well. We have a residential time right. of use rate, which you can use for your EV as well if you yeah. want to. Very cool. So now it's uh, time for a natural break. So we're going to okay. have a one-minute break while mm -hmm. we have our little uh, advertisement for other shows. The enemy. No, my colleague. So uh, we'll break now, and we'll be back in about one minute. And uh, we'll you know, have, have some more information. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we we're fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, achieving and sustaining success, and finding greatness. If you're a student, parent, sports or business person, and want to improve your life and the lives of people around you, tune in and join me on Mondays at 11 a.m. as we go beyond the lines on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Winston Welch, host of Out and About. It's a show that we have every other Monday on Think Tech Live here. We explore a variety of topics that are really interesting. We explore organizations, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. We've got some amazing guests on here, like all the shows at Think Tech. So if you want to catch up on stuff, tune into my show every other Monday and other shows here on Think Tech Live. It's a great place to learn about stuff, to be informed. And uh, if you have some ideas, come on my show. Let's talk about it. See you later and aloha. Okay, we're back at Hawaii, the state of clean energy. I'm really happy to have two representatives from Hawaiian Electric, uh, Mike Colon and Pam. Pam. <laughs> so I don't have to have struggle over the last name. It's a great, beautiful, beautiful last name. Okay. So. Everyone struggle. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so uh, the first uh, part of the uh, show today, we talked about the electrification of transportation overall. And for the second half, uh, I'd like to talk, uh, we'd like to talk a little bit about the backbone strategy and starting off with what is it what, what is a backbone what do you mean by that 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 kind of terminology okay for the for the general public sure you know, they're not like yes so um looking forward we wanted to identify uh future demand for um charging infrastructure mm -hmm. so we wanted to forecast that demand through 2030. um so this study uh undertook a forecast where we would look at that future um, charging demand, and you serve that as a basis for um, how we propose to uh, develop our own programs that flow out of it. So we identify the total need and then want to address some subset of that, uh, which we call a backbone. Right, and okay. so uh, it's a term that we, we've clung to, uh, it came out of our strategy document, yeah. and uh, really it just means uh, you know, a, a subset of the charging, total charging need that we will propose to address um, through Hawaiian Electric. Right? Part of our so programs. doesn't it also mean the grid itself? Like, I mean, getting down the basics, telephone poles with, uh, I don't know why they call them telephone poles, but with wires and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, you're going to have to really increase your generating capacity. And does the current infrastructure is it able to support that? I mean, right now we only have like a few thousand vehicles. What, ha what happens when we have tens of thousands of vehicles and they all plug in at, whatever time. Um, can, we, can our current grid support it? And is this what this part of the study is all about? Right. So I think the, the beauty of it is that, you know, these things slowly growing. So we are learning through how we, sure. when, while we're doing it, right? Okay. So um, we're working together with all, all the departments in, in the company to make sure that when we need the supply, mm -hmm. it will be there. Yeah. So we, we planning the grid to be able to support the electric vehicle that we forecast it to be in the future. And we're trying to leverage um, some of the technology down the road. Mm -hmm. When the technology becomes available, mm -hmm. we can leverage a vehicle because essentially it's a battery on wheels. Mm -hmm. right. um, there may be ways to integrate uh, right. grid services, things that would actually help the grid, help the utility manage the overall system using 
vehicle batteries in aggregate. Sure, right. Yeah. So they call that vehicle to grid, yes. V2G. Right. Yes. Right. How about that? You know? Yeah. Um, my understanding, talking to my friends who have electric vehicles, uh, is that idea is a great idea from the point of view of you know, system planners, but individual vehicle owners are always worried about the warranty on their battery. Like, you know, even though the grid would probably you know, give them some kind of incentive to do that, they're still worried about how long their batteries are going to last mm -hmm. and what the effect is. Do you have, can you comment on that right now, or is it like too early? Um, in terms of V two G, yeah, yeah, V two G, like you know, how, how deep have you dived into this? Yeah, so um, the technology is, is still in like a really early stage. They like mm -hmm. still doing research and art, like R and D on that. Right. Um, but then there's there has been uh, a bunch of tests um, pilot in on the mainland, mm -hmm. um, and it's more the problem. I think people uh, have that concern already with right. with or without the vehicle to grid. Right. Uh, idea, right? But then um, we, I guess, we just technology will get there, mm -hmm. and then um, the benefit would outweigh the cost right. at that point. And right. with the declining cost of battery, and you know the uh, even o OEM, um, all the dealerships are um, coming out of uh, coming up with all these like innovative programs lease battery, even like swap battery. Right. So there are a bunch of these innovative ideas to uh, tackle that problem. Sure. Yeah. And there have been some studies to evaluate duty cycles mm -hmm. and impacts of, yeah. uh, you know, re-injecting the energy. And they said uh, some of that preliminary studies have said the impact's been minimal. There is some degradation in battery life, but it's minimal. So mm -hmm. I think it is, like as Pam mentioned, it's really early. So right. um, those that integration in that future state yeah. where the utility can just push a button and say, great, we can aggregate all this stuff yeah. and let's use it, is still a ways away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we would like to uh, obviously facilitate that, provide mm -hmm. an opportunity, and then mm -hmm. make sure that our whatever we're deploying as far as infrastructure ha has that future capability, or at least yeah. is future proof enough that there's some communication opportunities so exactly. we can continue to lay the groundwork for that future state. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a really interesting concept. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of very innovative, and like you said, it's in, still in the formative years, and yeah. you know, we've got a long way to go. I mean, people don't even know how long their batteries are going to last. Yes. Like, you know, right. it's like, gee, I've got like, uh, you know, six years on my battery, and it's still going. Like, I was right. driving a Prius uh, this weekend on the Big Island. It's a 2004, wow. and the wow. thing is, it's got 100,000 miles on it, and it's still plugging away. I mean, no yeah. problem with the mm -hmm. battery. Like, yep. amazing. Right. Yeah. right. Very and good. That's you know? 15 years ago. Yeah. 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 So that's really, uh, and, and this isn't a hot, tr well, they live in Waimea, so it's like uh, not necessarily that hot up there, but you know, the, the tropical environment does take a toll on, mm -hmm. that, on battery life. So we do a lot of work at that at h &E I, which we can talk about after the show. Great. So yeah. uh, battery you know, life prediction and all that. So um, I'm, uh, what about uh, photovoltaics? Like, I have a neighbor who put a bunch of uh, PV on his roof, mm -hmm. and he took great delight in watching his meter go backwards, and he had a, a leaf, and, he, you know, he was just, like, thrilled to death with this kind of thing. So mm -hmm. are you getting the same response out of your customers, or? Initially, the initial uh, highest uh, adopters of electric vehicles were people who already own PV mm -hmm. systems on their home. Yeah. Right. Uh, which is great, uh, but that generally indicates a certain level of means, uh, and mm -hmm. we want to provide access and opportunities to everybody. So um, not just people who can afford or have single-family homes, mm -hmm. but right. people who live in multiple-unit dwellings and uh, other types of living situations we right. could uh, help foster. Because we believe there's actually a tremendous amount of pent-up demand. If there sure. were more yeah. solutions for people who live in condos and apartments, I think we think um, that would be much more electric vehicle adoption. Mm -hmm. So what about the GEMS program? I mean, you know, they put out this was a $100 million fund, and yes. they've yes. had a lot of problems deploying it yeah. so far. I mean, I, I would have thought that that's a great opportunity for Hawaiian Electric to, you know, support that and, you know, help yes. finance, particularly that it's meant for lower-income yes. families. Yes. So what can you say about yeah, that? Yeah, I used to be the uh, administrator at, for Hawaiian Electric at the uh, GEMS oh, remittance cool. program. So you're so, the right guy then. Yeah, yeah. The GEMS um, is a... Great opportunity. They've, they've, in the last uh, year and a half, they've really made great strides. Mm -hmm. uh, they've developed the Anvil financing program mm -hmm. for customers. So we think there's a great opportunity um, 
we need to clarify a few policy um, kind of constraints right now in terms of, you know, that money was designated for energy efficiency programs. Electric vehicles probably increase load, so may, there may be some question about aligning those two from a policy, but overall, it's still efficiency. Well, right? reduces and reducing our fossil, fossil fuel. fuel. So right. it's, that's the decarbonization yeah. is yeah. what we're talking mm -hmm. about. So we think as long as we can clarify that, um, there's tremendous opportunity to uh, leverage the existing framework of GEMS for uh, future opportunities. Yeah. So, uh, what's your uh, interface with the legislature been like? Have you, are you getting good support from the political class, or what? So, uh, the legislature has come around in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. the, uh, previously, um, the prevailing perception was that electric vehicles were for the rich, mm -hmm. um, and it, to be honest, it played out that way. With you know, like we were talking about um, early adopters, a lot of Tesla drivers and stuff mm -hmm. are fairly. Uh, well off, but sure. um, as we've uh, provided more education and uh, communication, more vehicle models have become available and continue to unroll. Um, uh, that that topic has kind of broadened, so people are much more open to the notion. Mm -hmm. They see the roles that various stakeholders in the community can play, mm -hmm. and see the opportunity. And then, of course, the tremendous growth potential and the alignment with other clean and Clean energy strategies that um, those two things kind of uh, initiate. So. so this is the Energy Policy Forum show. So mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm not trying to be unfair. I know you guys might not be able to talk about. But what kind of policies do you think are needed that should be implemented to help this transition? Is there is there anything obvious out there that we could be helpful by having some really you know new policies to sure. support this? Absolutely. Um, yeah. You know, we, we support all policies that uh, seek to uh, increase adoption, enable customer choice, in particular, um, things that would bring down the cost of vehicles, yeah. uh, policy that would help uh, bring more electric vehicles into the state, right. um, in, incentivize reuse of vehicles, mm -hmm. incentivize Second Life battery. Mm -hmm. That would help uh, the lower um, income. Yes, right. yes. yes. Incentivize infrastructure. So we currently have a, a bill that was um, passed this past year. It's a rebate for mm -hmm. charging infrastructure. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, expand the budget for that would be fantastic in the next uh, cycle. Uh, and then maybe an overall mandate. So other states have what's called a zero emissions vehicles mandate mm -hmm. in California. We can't be part of that um, because of our air is actually too clean in this case. That's right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it would be good if there were some sort of high level goal similar mm -hmm. to the um, renewable portfolio standard that sets targets sure. for that so yes. we would be in support of that okay. um, have you heard about the uh, uh, transportation services contracting now that was passed last session essentially it's it allows the county governments to have a public private partnership where the private company buys the vehicles and the, mm. yes. the, yes. the county government just pays like a service charge, like yes. miles, yep. you know, yes. cents per mile, passenger mile if it was a bus. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, yeah. and we think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, any way that you can help make uh, upfront costs mm -hmm. uh, for, for transitioning or electrification right. or clean transportation more feasible, right. we think is, you know, explore those options. Right. Um, we were in favor of that kind of. So maybe your one of your subsidiary companies could be, you know, one of the investors in this stuff. That would really maybe. help a lot. Possibly. <laughs> well, we'll talk to someone else about that. Yeah. Okay, sure. <laughs> you get great ideas here too. Yeah. So um, anyway, thank you very much. Believe it or not, this is the end of the. You know, we're oh. out of time. Thank you. Yeah, and thank I you really for uh, us. appreciate you guys coming down. And uh, maybe we can have you back again. So thank whenever you. you want to get the because this goes on YouTube and goes basically we hopeful viral. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, Pam. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, great. Thank and Michael, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So, everybody, that's it, our show for uh, this Wednesday. And we'll be back next Wednesday with another brilliant show. So, so, thank you very much for watching Hawaii, the state of clean energy, and aloha.